my honor to introduce our student speaker, Stephen Isaacs. Stephen is graduating summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science degree in Technical Management. His GPA is 4.0. Stephen, an employee of AT&T for 17 years, is currently a digital technician. He serves as a junior achievement job shadow program volunteer with AT&T Pioneers and has also volunteered with AT&T recovery teams following four hurricanes. Stephen is currently serving as an aviation maintenance officer for the North Carolina Army National Guard at Fort Bragg. He was deployed in Iraq in 2009 through 2010 and served on active duty in the United States Marine Corps during operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Stephen was a Commandant's List graduate of the U.S. Army Warrant Officer Candidate School. In addition to his volunteer activities, at AT&T, Stephen has led construction on teams with Trinity Baptist Church in Raleigh as part of the Rural Poverty Initiative with Hills and Hollers Ministries. He has also played an active role in converting a trailer into a mobile bunkhouse for the North Carolina Baptists on Mission Disaster Relief Team. Stephen has been an upward basketball referee volunteer since 2009. He and his wife, Jessica, have been married for 20 years. Thank you, Stephen. I'm going to stick to the script, trust me. <laughs> Good afternoon, honored guests, faculty, alumni, family, friends, and graduates of DeVry University, class of 2014. I am humbled and blessed to stand before you today. Who knew three years, eight months, and four days could be so long, yet go by so quickly? It's not as though I can count. <laughs> I would like to thank Dr. Kelly, Professor Morissette, my wife Jessica, and many of you who are here in attendance today for your mentorship, friendship, for both. On this, one of the happiest of occasions, I would like to share a quote and a story. Author and motivational speaker Zig Ziglar once said, it is not where you start or even what happens to you along the way that's important. What is important is that you persevere and never give up on yourself. The story is about a boy who was the firstborn of an average American family in the late 1960s. Average except that his father had some problems with the law and marital fidelity, which ultimately resulted in his parents' marriage ending very early. By the age of two, the boy and his mother moved out of state to live with his mother's aunt and uncle. It's not important where you start, it's important. The boy's mother worked hard, but she was still a child herself in some ways. She too had experienced a difficult upbringing the boy and his mother moved in and out of that extended family home many times over the next decade as his mother tried to build a family home of her own. Hopes were always high when the boy and his mother would leave, but her broken relationships would send them scrambling back to her aunt and uncle's place or sometimes the home of another generous family member. His mother's second marriage also brought a little more pressure to their lives as the union added a baby sister to the family just after the boy's fifth birthday. That marriage, too, ended early, less than a year after his baby sister's birth. During the next 12 years of the boy's primary education, he changed schools 12 times. The years and the changes were not synchronous. There were three different schools during each of the third, fifth, and seventh grades. The longest he attended any one school was the last three years of high school. 
As you may have guessed by now, this is my story. And even though picking up and moving all over the place, sometimes on a moment's notice, was not easy, there was a silver lining. I learned how to make friends quickly. Two of our moves found us moving into government-assisted Section 8 housing as part of a welfare program for single mothers who wanted to go back to school. As a minority in the projects, I learned to talk fast, run fast, or fight. <laughs> Remember, it's not what happens to you along the way that's important. Social welfare allowed my mother to attend local junior college during the day, sleep, study, and feed us during the evening, then work the third shift at a local hospital. The first program provided my mother an opportunity to earn her LPN license, and with a second program, five years later, she earned her RN license. By the time I was in high school, she was able to obtain a mortgage for our first home. I witnessed and experienced far more things than most people would ever want for a child. There were physical, mental, and emotional hardships due to spousal, child, and substance abuse. Remember, it's not what happens to you along the way that's important. I would say, though, the most difficult aspect of my childhood was the absence of a dad, a father, a strong male role model in my life to help motivate me and guide my efforts. That vacancy contributed to an attitude of apathy and, yes, to some degree, laziness. I would not have graduated from high school on time with my peers had the school not added some night classes. I took the easiest academic load possible and still finished with only a 2.5 grade point average. I began college in the fall right after graduation from high school, but I was completely unequipped for the rigors of academic demands and a full-time job. I quit before I really got going. I knew I was not ready to be in college. I went home for a couple of months and then enlisted in the Marine Corps. It was only after some degree of success in the military that I realized a little of what I was capable of achieving. Some of you here today may have had a similar experience and may already know why I share this with you. I am thankful for the struggles because without them, I would not have the understanding of the power or the mercy and grace of our Lord and Savior who delivers us from evil. When I was growing up, we were not in church much and definitely not on a regular basis. But I still felt there must be a higher power watching over me or why else would I still be here? I prayed for escape from my childhood so that I could have a more normal life. He answered my prayer. I always hoped and prayed for a life partner, someone I could trust as a friend. I had dated but was never at peace about a relationship until I met my beautiful wife, Jessica, almost 25 years ago. He answered my prayer. I prayed for work so I could provide for us. He answered my prayer. But I was still always afraid something would happen to take it all away, to wipe it all out. You see, I knew my shortcomings and my fears, and since I was relying upon me, I was afraid I might fail at some point. I was not trusting in God. My fears, the opposite of my faith, kept me from setting higher goals and attempting them. I am so thankful for the opportunity He provided me when I committed to school here at DeVry, shortly after returning from a tour in Iraq in 2010. There have been still occasional pangs of doubt, but they did not win out. Those who survived taking statistics here probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I prayed and said, Lord, I'm going to work hard and give this my best effort. If it is your will for me to succeed or fail, so be it. You are in control. When things have gotten tough, I have often returned to one of my favorite scriptures. Romans 5, 3-5, where it says, Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not point, disappoint us. Because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. Graduates, we have a lot of trouble in the world today. There is a lot of fear about the future of our country. Yet you have all demonstrated faith and hope in setting this goal and achieving it. Our families, employers, communities, and our country are all counting on us to solve, help solve the issues before us. While this graduation represents a great step and a major milestone, it should not become the last step in your journey. It is up to you to continue to demonstrate hope for the future. The children and young people in your families are watching you. You are modeling what they will become. You are making a difference in someone else's life. 
It's not where you start or even what happens to you along the way that's important. What is important is that you persevere and never give up on yourself. You have taken time and energy away from your families to finish strong. Now is the time to be with them and reflect upon your accomplishment. Just remember to, ret to return to the journey and be sure to bring someone along with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, family and friends. Thank you, guests. Congratulations, fellow classmates, and may God bless you all. Thank you, Stephen, for delivering such a wonderful, inspiring speech. I especially was drawn to what you said about graduation being a major milestone. Through your speech, I was able to visualize your personal accomplishments, and I am very happy to inform you of one more. DeVry conducts a major field test for all undergraduate and graduate students in the Business Senior Project or Capstone courses. This test was administered the week of June 1st, 2014 at our campus. You took this test. After taking this test, you scored in the top 10 percentile of all DeVry test takers nationally and internationally, and you are to be a graduate. Because of this honor, we are proud to present you with a certificate. And as you said, what is important is that you persevere. You obviously did, and again, congratulations. Thank you, Stephen, for sharing your wonderful words with us today.